Stay tuned for Airgun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and today we can take the mystery out of something pretty special here. It's the Norica Omni ZRS, and we'll get into the details on this in a second. But if you hadn't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel. And don't forget, check out my website if you have a chance, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I've got various t-shirts, I've got some hats, got the Generation 2 bipods, the gamma trigger screws, and I'll also put some of my inventory up there. So I try to recycle that in order to bring new stuff in. So anyway, let's get back to the subject on hand here. This is the Norica, it's brand new. Um, Norica Omnia ZRS. The ZRS, that's their new recoil system. In other words, it eliminates any felt recoil, which is pretty amazing in a brake barrel. This comes in both 0.177 caliber and 0.22, 22 caliber. So we're gonna be testing the 22 caliber. Now this is 100% made in Spain by Norica. Uh, this features a gas piston as opposed to a spring piston. It's 47 inches overall. It's got a 19 inch barrel. The gun weighs about 8 pounds and it has about a 30 pound cocking effort right around there. It does have a fully adjustable trigger first and second stage and it's about mm, it's about 3 pounds out of the box but as I said, you can totally adjust that. It has fiber optic sights. It's got your green in the back and it's got your red in the front. And yes, it does have a scope rail. This entire piece across the top is an 11 millimeter scope uh, rail. So you can set up your optics on this. This shoots, uh, they're claiming in the mid 700s. But uh, let me show you real quick how this functions. If you can see uh, here, when the gun is cocked, this rifle is moved into the forward position. And then when you fire it, it actually absorbs the recoil this way. So see this movement here? It goes back and forth, back and forth. So when you cock it, it pulls it forward. When you fire it, it goes backwards. So the nice thing is this part of the rifle right here does not move at all, not even one bit. So guess what? You can put any type of scope you want on this and you don't have to worry about a recoil destroying it. So it'll definitely save, um, save your uh, scopes. So, and you're not limited on what type of scope you want to put on there, which is nice. This also has an adjustable cheek rest. This is adjustable for height. You can see it's kind of a little funky design, but it's actually somewhat comfortable. And it's got kind of a uh, uh, ergonomic grip here. And what's great, this rifle is 100% ambidextrous for you left-handers like me. It will fall right into that category. And again, I said this one's in 22 caliber, so we're going to go out and test this. It does have a manual safety. When you cock that, this goes backwards, so you just push this forward, which I like, is the opposite direction of the trigger, uh, to take it off safe. But let's go out and run this through our test, and uh, let's just go have some fun with it, because this is a pretty exciting. This is just a whole um, new concept. I mean, there's been a few guns out there that are like this. But uh, this is a, a kind of a different setup, so let's see how it works. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test our ZRS for some velocity here. And what we're going to do, I did a lot of pellet testing here. So I'm going to do the most accurate pellet. This was not overly pellet picky. At the end of the review, I'm going to show you a bunch of different targets, how the different pellets did. But we're going to go ahead and use the, uh, the Barracuda Greens. These are about a 13 grain pellet, and they're an alloy pellet, but they... I've been noticing they've been doing really well on a lot of different rifles. So let's just do five shots. We'll average it out. Then I'm going to tell you how it did with the, uh, a lead pellet, which in my opinion was probably the second best accurate pellet. Okay. So shot number one. Just to make you guys happy, I'll open the... Uh... Okay, shot number one. 707. Shot number two, seven fifteen. Shot number three, seven fourteen. Let's get 
feet. Oops, dropped that one. Okay, shot number four. Seven twenty, and one more. Shot number five, seven oh four. Okay, so you're looking, you know, right around that fifteen foot pounds of energy there. So another tar or, uh, pellet that did well, the field target trophies. These are a fourteen point six six grain pellet. We average about 680 feet per second with these, and we got about 15 foot-pounds of energy, which is kind of par for the course for a, you know, basically a 30-pound cocking effort type rifle. So anyway, there's your numbers. So let's move on to the next segment. Okay, let's do some accuracy tests here with our ZRS and just see how well we can make a group. We're going to go ahead and shoot the Barracuda Greens, same pellets that we shot uh, in our chrono test initially. We want to see how well we can make this rifle group. It's not overly pellet picky. Once again, I'll show you some various targets at the end, how well the rifle did as far as grouping goes. We're going to use our four inch splatter burst targets. I'll leave you guys a link. These are always great for showing the impact points. But go ahead and check out our distance real quick. Yep, it's our usual 20 yards. So anyway, let's uh, see how well we make a group. Again, don't worry about if it hits in the red zone or not. We're just trying to make this thing group. All right. That's one. And two. Yeah, about a 30, 32 pound cocking effort. It's not too shabby. And three. And four. And one more. And five. Not too shabby of a group. Like I said, it wasn't all in the red zone, but it grouped pretty well, as you can see. It really did. So I take that almost every day, that's for sure. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next segment. All right, let's uh, test the trigger pull weight on our Omnia. Okay, first off, let me tell you something. The triggers on those rifles are fantastic. If anyone tells you anything different, they have no idea what they're talking about. These are a fully adjustable trigger. You can adjust the first stage and the second stage on it. And there's a few other tricks you can do. I might share with you later on. We'll see how that goes. But um, I just adjusted this out of the box and I'm gonna show you the performance here. So we got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge. Let's give it a pull. Let's see how well we're doing here. One pound, 12 ounces. One pound, 12 ounces. Again, I'm gonna tell you, the triggers on these are absolutely fantastic. Fully adjustable, separate adjustment for a first stage, and then you have your, obviously, your second adjustment for your second stage. Terrific triggers. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next segment. All right, time for a little plinking here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and shoot the H&N Field Target Trophies, the 14.66 lead pellets. They also were a very accurate pellet in this gun, but there's a little bit of wind, so I figured that might help us out a little bit. But anyway, we're at usual 40 yards or plinking distance. Go ahead and check that out real quick. See, we've got a couple of steel eggs up there. Yes, and I have an empty H&N field target trophy can there. Anyway, and a little, a little gold cap. So let's, uh, let's just see if we can knock this stuff down and uh, just have some fun here. All right, I guess we'll start with a can on the right side. Then we can work our way over. All right. That's a hit. And what do we got next there? 
Actually, let's get the uh, that little aluminum uh, looking pipe thing in between the two eggs. I want to hit that next. There we go. Now, let's uh, go for that right egg. Let's do the little gold cap to the left of the egg. There we go. And let's finish it off with that last red little egg. Man, this breech is a little bit on the tight side. <clears throat> Pellets are a little tough getting in there. All right, and let's see if we can finish this with our last red egg there. There we go. There you go. Anyway, there's your ZRS at uh, about 40 yards, doing a little plinking there. Not too shabby. Anyway, let's uh, wrap this up with our conclusion. How did our Norica do here? How did our Omnia with our new ZRS system do? I think it did actually uh, pretty well. But like anything else, I have to explain to you guys something. This is a brand new product. So it's just like new cars that come out. There's always going to be some issues in the first models. And I identified a few, and those are going to be my negatives that I'm going to share with you. But the good news is, just before I get into this, just so you guys know, and I'll repeat this, I've been in contact with the manufacturer. I told them about my issues. They're absolutely receptive of it, and they are going to correct that in future models. So... Anyway, just so you know. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You guys don't know. Okay, a couple things here. Actually, a few things. First off, the breech on the rifle was a little sharp for my taste. In other words, it was a little sharp, hard getting the pellets in there, and it was a little tight, too. And that can be easily corrected. And I actually corrected mine with a Dremel and just smoothed it out and polished it. That's something you don't need to do. It's something they're going to do, hopefully, at the factory here in the future. But I just smoothed it out a little bit, so then it was very receptive to taking the pellets. And I, I realize sometimes they don't want to do it because they don't want uh, it to be a loose-fitting pellet in there because then you lose velocity. But it was just, some of, these were, some of these pellets were almost impossible to put in there. And then it, and it was sharp at the same time. So that can be totally corrected. It's simple, simple, simple process. Other problem I had. Okay, so right out of the box, I like to test it, shoot it a lot. So after about 200 rounds, the recoil system jammed. It would not move whatsoever. You'd cock it, it was frozen, completely locked up. So what I did is I disassembled it. The gun's not that difficult to disassemble. And what I discovered is in the front portion of this gun, right in this area, I'll show you some pictures of it, there's a plastic sleeve that allows this um, to take up the tolerance in here and keeps it on a nice guide. Well, there's some grub screws in there, some six millimeter grub screws, and they backed out. And one of them caught the aluminum frame here and it, and it froze. So I had to get this taken apart, or I, rather I had to take it apart. And uh, what I did is I just put some blue Loctite on the screws and it solved the problem, it kept them from coming back. And then it moved just fine. But that's something that they're definitely going to address at the factory on all future models. Number three, this cocking system, as I show you many a times, uh, when you cock it, the brake barrel, this moves forward and it holds it in spot. There's a little yellow disc there, and it's, it's a, a pla basically a plastic disc. And after about 700 rounds, I noticed that this movement was getting really sloppy. In other words, if I would take the gun and I would just tap it, this movement would drop right to the back section here. It would just, just a little boom, and this would collapse. So what's happening is that disc is either A, a little too small in diameter, or just kind of wearing out prematurely. So anyway, I brought that to the attention of the manufacturer, and they're totally going to address that. And that can be solved easily by making just a little bit larger disc, or maybe just a, a, a more uh, resistant type material. So the good news is the manufacturer is aware of all this and they're going to make the corrections on this. 
But let's just get into the positives. Those were some negative stuff. The positives on this, this new system, what we'll call anti-recoil, it's anti-felt recoil. It still recoils, but you just don't fill it. I think it's absolutely amazing. And in fact, I want to show you this. This thing is so smooth, you can actually set a pellet on this and fire it and the pellet won't move. Check this out. Yep. Now watch it in slow motion. Now watch it in slow motion so you can see the movement. Yep. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. It really is. So you absolutely, to be honest with you, you do not feel the recoil in this whatsoever. Long, long as this thing's cocked and this is actually to the front, it, you do not feel the recoil. The great thing about that, you have this nice big area here that you can put a scope on with 11 millimeter mount and your scope is going to have zero recoil. So that means you can use a more or less expensive scope or you can put a really expensive scope on it and not worry about it being damaged. So that's awesome. So the ZRS system is truly amazing. It really is. I also, I like the stock on this and I like this ambidextrous grip. It's kind of a textured grip. It really fits your hand well and uh, the adjustable cheek race. It's kind of a, it's a different looking, definitely a different looking stock uh, on an air gun. You just, it's not very common, but it's really cool. It really is. I do like that. The gun is very easy to cock. It's like a 30 pound cocking effort. So there's not much to it as far as that goes. I liked um, the trigger on this thing. The trigger is absolutely amazing. And it is fully adjustable. There's a first stage and a second stage adjustment screw. In order to adjust the trigger on this, you got to take the stock off. There's eight bolts or six bolts, two, four, six. You take those, the stock comes off. That's it. You get it out of the way, then you can adjust your trigger, and then you can actually test fire it without the stock on there and uh, get the trigger dialed in. But you can adjust that first and second stage. Now, I cheated a little bit because I really wanted a target trigger. So there's a little spring on the outside of the trigger. Literally in 10 seconds, I took that spring off and uh, you can see it here. And then the little adjustment screw, I backed it all the way out and there was no reason to leave it in the gun. So I just took that off. And then you saw that dropped my um, trigger down to well under uh, two pounds. But keep in mind, you could void your warranty by doing that. So I caution you to do uh, any, uh, anything other than making the standard adjustments. And you might like it just the way it is but you do have the option with the first and second stage uh, adjustment screws. So those are completely separate. Okay, another thing that I really liked was the accuracy on this thing. And it was not overly pellet picky. Check out these targets. I got quite a few targets that I went through in the variations of pellets. In fact, I'll, I'll show this on full screen for you in case you guys wanna pause it and you can totally check it out. But you see all the different pellets that I used uh, trying to dial in just the best pellet for this rifle. And like I said, it wasn't overly pellet picky. The only thing I would caution you, you want to use under a 16 grain pellet. Do not use over a 16 grain pellet. Number one, this is on par with a non-magnum as far as velocity goes. You're just not going to be able to get the proper velocity and accuracy with the heavier pellets. So like I said, um, below a 16 grain pellet. And uh, you saw the ones that uh, performed the best for us. In fact, um, my latest two targets, these were after, after I did uh, a couple things to this thing where I did the trigger and, uh, and polished and uh, um, cha chamfered that uh, breech, took care of all that. I want you guys to see these targets. Okay, this was with our, the Barracuda Greens. Look at that. Yep, that's from 20 yards. And then just for the heck of it, I used these, uh, what were these? Oh, these were a, um, a Norma. These were like a wad cutter, but heck of a group. So this thing actually shoots quite well. It really does. And the fact that you don't have that recoil just makes it nice and smooth and easy, especially when you're taking those long shots. I mean, you saw how we did in the plinking session. I thought we did pretty outstanding with that. So this rifle, is it's pretty awesome and I'm gonna tell you what else is really awesome is the manufacturer of how receptive they were when I contacted them and talked to them about these minor issues that I felt really need to be corrected because I'm trying to look out for you guys you spend your hard money on a rifle you want it to perform and I can tell you right now Norica is aware of that and all the future rifles that are going to be coming out they are going to address these issues so that's really good but now you ask yourself, how would I rate this rifle? Okay, I'm gonna have to rate it out of the box. And since we had some minor issues, it's getting four stars. It's, it's getting four stars. I think this, this uh, ZRS um, 
anti-felt uh, recoil system is pretty, pretty awesome. It really is. But I, we did have some issues with it that need to be corrected. So right now it's a four-star rifle. I don't think it's going to take much. If you just do the three things um, that we chatted about, uh, it'll be a five-star rifle because it's it, it, I think about this with the younger ones and the ladies, even Lucy. Lucy doesn't like the recoil on the brake barrel, so she likes something that doesn't have it. She can cock a 30-pound rifle. She's strong enough to do that, but she just not, doesn't normally like recoil. So this is absolutely perfect for her. This is something that would be right down her alley. And the original design on this, this the original design was to shoot open sights. That's what this, the whole design behind it was, and non-rested. So it'd be like good plinking or hunting, but it works fine in a rested position. You just gotta make sure you keep your hand away from the barrel and, and the sight, because that is gonna move back on you. So you keep your hand out of the way. And I kind of mastered that going through the process. Like I said, I put, I, you know, I got a thousand rounds through this thing now, total. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of air gun detectives. I really like bringing you something new because it's fun for me as well as um, hopefully you guys enjoy that. But anyway, don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. So until next time, I hope you're getting lots of shooting in and you and your families are doing well. So take care and God bless.